Customer care operations is undergoing a technology transformation. It's centered around new tools for customer experience. If you're in a customer care, you need to stay abreast of the rapidly changing technology landscape. If you're in IT, you need to understand how technology is rapidly changing for those that you support and how you'll operationalize around these new technologies. Let's take a look at how your organization can increase customer satisfaction while saving a lot of money in the process. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a vice president at ARG. And while I work for ARG, this video is my own and does not reflect the views or opinions of my employer. This channel is, to, is dedicated to helping IT leaders and specifically in this video, including customer care and sales leaders to make great business decisions. We're gonna talk about the rapidly changing service delivery opportunities presented by, inter, by intelligent voice assistants. Been in this business long enough, I have a hard time adjusting from interactive to intelligent. So we're talking about intelligent voice assistants or IVAs. But before I get to pontificating, I'd like to relate an experience I had with a provider just very recently. Last week, my home internet went out. This happened on the morning of Christmas Eve, which also happened to be a Saturday. I had family who had traveled to stay with us, so this was more than just a slight inconvenience. Now I get up early, so I discovered the outage around 6 a.m. I reset and power, uh, power cycled my router, nothing changed. And I checked the fiber termination box in my garage and bingo, no lights. The box was completely dark. So I spent some time troubleshooting the device but could not get it to power up. I was dead, my home was dead in the water in terms of internet. So on my phone, I go to the provider's website and look up the support options. It being a Saturday, phone support was not available until 8 a.m. Chat support, however, was available. So I went through their process, which included a virtual test of my service using my account information. I thought that was pretty slick the first time I did it. The virtual test takes several minutes, and once that virtual test was completed and they verified I was not okay, they allowed me to enter the queue for the chat with an agent. Minimum wait time, 27 minutes, according to their system. So I wait. The message on the chat window in my phone said, do not close this chat window or you'll be kicked out of the queue. So I, I get that after my phone went to sleep about 10 times and I panicked that I'd been bumped out, I changed the setting on my phone so it wouldn't go to sleep. And I continued to, uh, continue to wait. I'm not exactly sure how long I waited that first time, but maybe it was over 15 minutes. And I suddenly get a message on my phone that said something to the effect of, thank you for contacting XYZ. We hope you're satisfied with our service today. Have a great day. I was like, what? <laughs> I'd been kicked out after waiting in the queue quite a while. So I start the chat process again. Put in my account information, wait for the remote test to run, and re-enter the queue. Estimated wait time now is 37 minutes. Super frustrated. Um, and I check the time so I can keep track of it this time. Exactly 20 minutes later, I get the same. Thank you for contacting XYZ. We hope you're satisfied with our service today. Have a great day. You've got to be kidding me. I try a third time. And yet again, right at 20 minutes, I'm kicked out of the chat queue again. It seemed as though they were deleting chat sessions after 20 minutes of wait time, even though their wait time was longer than 20 minutes. I don't know where this logic comes from, but I was furious. And now I'm an hour and a half into the process and I've gotten nowhere closer to fixing my issue. Well, to continue my saga, it's almost 8 a.m. now when the call of center opens and I get, and I actually get distracted and call a few minutes past eight. I was hoping to be first in line. Maybe I call in at 8.05, something like that. I put in my account information, wait a few minutes while they run their test again, and I get placed into the um, uh, call queue. Minimum hold time in excess of one hour. <laughs> my blood was boiling at this point. I want to emphasize that I am in this business. I knew I was going to wait on hold, but this is insane. To top it off, the hold music was about a 15 second clip that just cycled over and over again. Uh, and I had to endure that clip for the, well over the hour that I was on hold. Anyway, I have to say that the web page did have a callback option, but who really thinks that the callback option would happen anytime within the hour or even the, the, the day given my current experience. So I didn't even try the callback option. 40 minutes into holding, I thought I would try the chat option again. I had nothing else to do with my time. I was tied to my phone, which was now plugged into the wall because my battery had been taxed for the last two plus hours. I wasn't going anywhere. 
So I got on the chat queue again after sitting through the several minutes of the remote test. This is now the fifth time they had supposedly remote tested my service this morning. And I wait in the queue. 55 minutes, they tell me this time. I'm like, right, let's see what happens after 20 minutes. And amazingly, after 20 minutes, I'm still in the chat queue. So still waiting, but I hadn't been kicked out. That's an improvement, I guess. So after being on hold uh, on, the, on the call queue for well over an hour, a voice interrupts my hold music, staring at the chat screen um, in, in a somewhat catatonic state from the repetitive music. I was like, yes, a live person. And I was like, oh my gosh, don't mess this up. Steve, don't push the red button and dump the call as you were moving from the chat queue uh, screen to the call screen. Okay. So um, long story short, I was able to open a trouble ticket with my provider after two additional tests. So 15 minutes on the phone with a live person doing tests that quite honestly could have been done while I was on hold. But oh well, I get that they don't have everything automated. I got my trouble ticket and they scheduled service for the last four, four days uh, after the fact. I didn't raise a fuss about the four days. I knew they would not be able to send someone out uh, that day on Christmas Eve and everyone um, in my house actually had phones with the separate internet connections and we're not gamers. So there was an inconvenience over the holiday, but we actually spent more time talking than we otherwise would have. So that's probably good. So when I hung up the call with the agent, lo and behold, that chat agent was ready to assist me. That's great timing. Okay, so enough of my story. The opportunities, however, that this um, uh, illustrate for an improved customer experience are well just just quite honestly endless now it's getting to now let's get into some of the things that if your company provides customer care of any nature you can implement to reduce the friction and frustration your customers may experience when interacting with your service organization we're going to save some big costs along the way so hopefully this will be a win-win for the entire organization my experience got me thinking about doing an update on customer service automation I've done videos in the past that deal with some of the developments in the contact center as a service space. This video is going to be focused specifically on how organizations can deliver information to callers without engaging human agents. It's the waiting for human agent that causes the most frustration for your customers. If we can automate some of the live agent interactions, we can reserve your live agent resources for the situation where automation simply isn't possible. Our objective here is to work on offloading the informational request to an automated platform. Things like requests for product information, location addresses, store hours, or things that might require some systems integration, such as order status, balance inquiries, reorders, password changes, appointments, reservations, etc. These call types are normally handled with a live agent today, but they can be automated. Many actually uh, many people actually prefer to have an automated resolution to their problem that's fast and efficient. Generally, people are okay providing their own customer care if it re represents the path of least resistance. Customer care today is about frictionless interactions and not spending over an hour on hold with just to schedule a service call that I know I need. Whenever we talk about automation, one of the first questions I get uh, to this would be, does this cost someone their job? The short answer is that, not in my experience, two things happen in these rollouts simultaneously. First is that the customer support staffing typically has a pretty high natural turnover, turnover rate or attrition rate. So there's natural attrition that we can expect when introducing automation. Second is that the automation is rolled out over time and these gradual rollouts allow for the natural attrition to cover the staff reductions we do hope to see yielding targeted cost savings. So in the long run, these automation projects generally do not re uh, result in, a, um, in an active headcount reduction activity, like a, um, a layoff, but it will re uh, result in reduced headcount over time. You just stop replacing the people that are naturally leaving your organization. I'll also mention one other element that eases the overall staffing concern, is that the IVA will create jobs in your organization. IVAs are very user-friendly, but they do require some staff time for maintenance and upkeep. So some of your staff, especially some of your more experienced staff, might get the opportunity to help 
design and continue to manage that IVA based upon their deep experience with your systems and the human interactions that are required by your organization. So we expect the IVA to reduce the need for human agents, but not replace human agents entirely. AI needs to come a long way before it can replace some of the compassion, empathy, and care we humans express for one another. We expect efficiencies in human labor, but this is not a replacement strategy. From a solution perspective, many people immediately leap to conversational AI when we talk about context and automation. Conversational AI is certainly a goal, but it's proven to be difficult to implement effectively. The ability for a computer to seamlessly interact with a caller is still something of a pipe dream. We believe it will come, but the resources required to establish and then provide the care and feeding of an effective conversational AI are not yet feasible. What's more practical, um, for the contact center at least, are applications that um, are referred to as intelligent virtual agents or IVAs. IVAs are speech-enabled bots that intelligently interact with callers and chatters for that matter without engaging in a full-blown full -blown back and forth conversation. IVAs are automated response platforms with a little bit or uh, a little or a lot of capabilities built into them depending upon the need of the client. Importantly, they're front-ended with natural language processing capabilities, so they can hear and process natural speak of your callers, but the IVA response to the speech is more scripted. We'll let the caller use their words, but return something of a canned response when the IVA platform has confirmed that such a response is appropriate. These responses are usually fully scripted rather than created on the fly as you would expect a conversational AI platform to deliver. The scripting provides your organization with full control of the experience and the outcomes for the caller. Let's think of a simple example. Say I owned a pizza shop. My online ordering capabilities were on point. People love using our web interface and many clients have established accounts that have their favorite pizzas stored, making reordering a breeze. Weekend orders are strong but oh, through the online platform, but weekday online orders fall off and we take significantly more orders over the phone during the work week. Hold times can grow to over seven minutes with our relatively small contact center, if you will, people taking these calls. Um, but, it, um, but abandonment becomes a big issue. Abandonment increases if hold times are over just two minutes. Why is this happening? Well, we surmise that during the work week, people are commuting home or on their kids' practice fields with limited ability to navigate sign in and place an, uh, an order online. So we want to make it easier for our customers to place orders over the phone. Well, we could add more staff to the peak two hours where orders are coming in fast and furious, but throwing bodies at the solution um, isn't necessarily what we want to do. In fact, we've calculated that the cost of taking an order over the phone versus the cost of our web ordering, um, and we've discovered that uh, Live, my person answers might cost a full dollar fifty U.S. more than automated orders. That's about eight percent of gross revenue and about twenty-five percent of net margin that we lose by answering the phone for an order versus providing an automated option. Now, I won't go through the hypothetical IVA for our local uh, pizza shop in detail, but you can imagine that when a call is received, we could compare that call to a database of phone numbers and know who's calling right away if the Account has saved their credit card with our credit card processor. We might have some authentication process, either a PIN or better, like a voice biometric um, authentication process to ensure the caller um, and, and register the caller with their account. We can ask them if they would like to place their usual order. And if so, great, we're done. If not, we can go through a prescripted menu for them to build their own custom order. It's not that complicated. And customers love the convenience. They don't have to change how they reach out. We handle their phone orders without any hold time. Weekday orders increase and overall margins go up as well. The platform generates a positive ROI right out of the gate. Now, this example is pretty simple from an IBA platform perspective. The back end of actually placing orders and interfacing with payment and care, um, uh, payment card processors is more complex. Most customer care organizations have low-hanging fruit. 
informal requests, for example, that your current platform tries to drive to your website. These are the immediate opportunities to serve up a link to a caller's cell phone or email address for some pre-canned information. Additional capabilities such as balance checking, order status, and ordering can be added as they're available and the business case makes sense as the platform scales. So, okay, big question, how much does this cost and how hard is it? Well, like everything, that depends and it's impossible to answer that question generically. IVAs are generally usage-based, so you'll pay per call or per minute, and it's directly uh, variable to your volume. IVAs are actually quite affordable to run, but the cost does increase when capabilities are added and systems are integrated. But those costs, again, need to be justified through their own business cases. IBM actually has claimed that they've saved about a billion dollars by implementing their IVA it's within their environment. So that's just one example, maybe an extreme example, but one example that's publicly available. So when talking about um, contact center activity automation, serving up basic information, for example, in, um, an IVA will cost about 10%, roughly, of what a live agent providing that same information uh, to the caller would, would cost. Further, you can provide in, uh, things like in-language support for your international language customers without needing to staff expensive language-capable team members. So that's a great value add. Lastly, the cost to maintain the system is not huge. The GUI interfaces allow non-technical business users to change and maintain the system. Sophisticated and expensive developers and technicians are no longer necessary in all but the most extreme development scenarios. Now, IVAs need to be part of your customer care strategy. So if you'd like to know more, discuss your strategy further, please feel free to contact me. My information's in the description of this video. And if you got some value out of this video, I'd appreciate a like or thumbs up. And if you wanna to return to this channel in the future, the best way of doing that is to hit the subscribe button. That will put my video in your feed and allow you to come back here at any time. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.